Hi fish fam, today I want to look at one of the best solutions for ending hunger strikes in your fish, black worms. If you live someplace where you can get these easily, then farming them probably isn't worth your time. But if you have to special order a quarter of a pound at a time like I do, then setting up a farm is definitely worth your time and money. Maybe you just want to grow your own so you know what's in them. There's a lot of good reasons, so let's look at how to do it. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Black worms can usually be found at your local pet store. They're about two to five dollars for a tablespoon and I've never had a fish turn them away. This is Jefferson. Jefferson has some sort of permanent issue with a couple of his neuromasts. For whatever reason, every couple of months, Jefferson gets a single infected neuromast, which I have to heat treat at 90 degrees for a couple of days to cure and then he's fine again. It's not lateral line disease, he never gets more than one, and it moves, so he's got some genetic predisposition to this happening. And when it happens, Jefferson refuses to eat. He refuses to eat flakes, pellets, brine shrimp, scuds, bloodworms, baby ghost shrimp, daphnia, cyclops, or basically anything else you can think of. But he doesn't refuse to eat black worms, because black worms are the fish equivalent of candy bars. They're something like 20% fat, and their nutritional value is pretty low, which means you don't want to feed them all the time, but they're a great source of temporary energy for fussy or sick fish. They're also a great way to teach a fish that you're their friend and help them to overcome being skittish, because they're highly rewarding food. And problematically for me, my local fish store doesn't carry black worms normally, so I have to special order them at a quarter of a pound each, which can get pretty pricey. It can range from $20 to $50, depending on your store and their distributor, and while they last in the refrigerator for a while, as long as you do daily water changes, it's a lot more of a hassle than I feel like going through. So today we're setting up a blackworm farm. First thing you're going to need to do is rinse them pretty well. You're going to want to make sure that you get all of the gunk out of them that they ship with. They tend to be grown in pretty filthy water, and it smells a little bit like raw sewage, so you want to rinse them break them up a bit, you know, just stick something in like a wooden spoon, stir them up pretty well, make sure that you get all of the crap that's down inside of the ball they're going to be in when you order them out, and rinse them thoroughly three or four times until the water's pretty clear. Then you're going to want to make sure that the water just sits for a while, because chances are pretty high you're going to have some leeches in here, and you don't really want the leeches living in your tank and ending up either getting in your fish tank or on your skin later. When you let the water sit for a little while, the leeches will come out of the ball of black worms. They'll start to crawl up the walls of whatever you've got them sitting in, and you can pull them out with a plastic spoon or something else. It's pretty simple to do, and then you don't have to worry about it. The black worms are not tube effects. Tube effects tend to have parasites and other things in them, and there are a few other differences as well. One of the big ones is that black worms reproduce primarily through segmentation. In a lot of places around the world, they've never even found adult blackworms that are capable of laying eggs or reproducing. Instead, they break into pieces, and each piece regrows a new mouth or anus or whatever's missing, and then it goes on its merry little way, eating more detritus and getting big enough to split again. So our goal is to set up an environment that encourages or even causes a fairly high rate of splitting without shredding these things. So the first thing we need is a substrate. And a lot of the videos or how-tos people show use brown paper bags or unbleached napkins like you get from Taco Bell. And this works really well as a food source. It's the way that they grow them in labs. And it'll work wonderfully. But from what I can tell, you get a better split rate with gravel. So I've got two inches of tractor supply safety absorbent here. It's light enough that they can burrow easily, but jagged enough to break them up occasionally. Next thing you need is air. In the wild, these worms live in very shallow water, and they'll extend up to the surface to breathe directly through their skin. Now you can use shallow water, but it means more frequent water changes. So I use about five to six inches of water, and I throw in an air stone and a sponge filter. They both help to keep the tank a little bit cleaner, keep the smell down a little bit, but they add a lot of oxygen back into the water so that your worms aren't gonna drown. And that's it. Depending on what you feed them, you'll want to change the water about every week. If you see them start to crawl up the sides of the tank, it's a good sign that they're unhappy and need a water change. So now we've got a growing black worm culture in gravel. How do we get them out? There's two ways. 
Number one, grab a handful of gravel, put it in the net, set the net in another container of water, and just wait for them to squirm out. This will usually happen reasonably quickly. If you're in a big hurry, you can do way number two, nine volt batteries. This is sort of like the technique they use to harvest earthworms. Get your gravel in your net, set it in your water, and apply just a little bit of voltage. You can see here the setup I have, a 9 volt battery plus a couple of wires coming out of a clip. Apply the voltage and presto, instant worms. Just dump the gravel back in your culture tank when you're done. You can also culture them in dead vegetation, duckweed, clumps of grass, whatever you want. The electricity trick makes it easy to harvest them from anything. Gravel just seems to give the best yields because it causes the most splits. That's it. You're ready to set up your own culture. You don't have to use an aquarium. I'll be moving these into a large shallow Rubbermaid box eventually to allow a better grow out. I just don't have the room for it right now. Total cost for a cheap container, air pump, sponge filter, any sort of gravel and water is about $15, which is a lot cheaper than paying $40 repeatedly for a quarter pound. And like a lot of the other live foods I talk about, feeding them can be basically free. They're a great way to convert your trash into snacks for your fish. Hope you found this useful, and if you want to see more videos, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon. We'll see you next time.